The city of Krat had no shortage of problems even before the puppet frenzy. It was known as a city of industry, advanced technology, and philanthropy. But behind the scenes, it was apparent that the people held no true power in Krat. The alchemists, originally led by Valentinus Monad, held the true power in the city, and did whatever was needed to preserve their place at the top of society. To that end, they invested in the Monad Charity House, or as it came to be known, the Rose Estate. This organization was a home for those training to be stalkers, workshop technicians, or alchemists. Typically members of the stalkers tended to be either orphans or children of high society that were cast out of their families, and some would find a new, surrogate family among those they trained with. This is how Carlo, the son of Geppetto, came to know his best friend, and possibly the only person in the world he trusted, Romeo, the boy who would become the King of Puppets. Welcome back to Lore of P, a new series where we take a look at the stories of individual characters in Lies of P, laying out their lives to make better sense of their place in the history of Krat. If you end up enjoying our lore dive, please consider subscribing to the channel. While we're primarily known for our Elden Ring lore, we'd like to break out of that niche a bit and bring you a wider variety of content, and strong performance on videos focusing on other topics could help make that lofty goal a little more plausible. We also have a Discord where we talk about the lore of our favorite games, so feel free to check that out as well. Thanks for choosing to spend some time with us, and with that said, let's dive into the story of Romeo. We don't know much about Romeo's background, only that he was a young boy being raised within the Monad Charity House. We can assume he was an orphan, as he does mention how it's nice to have any family at all. It was during his time there that he was introduced to Geppetto's son Carlo by a young girl at the estate, who we suspect was Sophia. During their time at the house, it seems Romeo may have been Carlo's inspiration for becoming a stalker, and he even shared his chosen stalker name with him. Are you trained to be a stalker too? Well, let's practice together. Call me Lampwood. We can tell from various items in the game that the two became fast friends. The Monad Charity House Guide is a picture we can find describing the purpose of the house. Children can get stalker, workshop technician, and alchemist education according to their aptitude and career path. To this day, about 200 graduates are from the Monad Charity House and are actively working in different fields in Krod. For more details and sponsorship, please contact the Charity House Manager. The best part of this collectible is the glimpse we get into the camaraderie of these two, as it seems that a picture of Carlo must have been included in the guide. You look like a donkey in this picture. Stop doodling on my picture, Romeo. Romeo and Carlo grew even closer over time and eventually graduated together, becoming full-fledged stalkers. However, after their graduation, Carlo told Romeo how his father didn't even bother showing up. Didn't even come to your graduation? I don't care if an old man like that kicks the bucket. Don't say that. It's nice you got any family at all. Let's start talking about this. Oh, she's here. Grab her. We can assume that immediately after this is when Carlo gifted Romeo his graduation necklace. The item, Someone's Necklace, tells us. It is engraved with a boy's scribblings. To Romeo, your friend C. The boy resented his father for not showing any interest in him. Perhaps in protest, he gave his graduation necklace to Romeo, a friend he admired. We can see how deep this friendship ran, with Romeo essentially becoming Carlo's chosen family. After their talk about graduation, the boys saw the one known as the legendary Stalker, and chased her down in order to request an opportunity to train under her. Teach me how to use a sword. 
You're a legendary stalker. Ugh, so annoying. Germany, get rid of her. I'm off. Unfortunately, she was dismissive of the boys and left them behind at the estate. That is when tragedy struck. The book Rose Estate Incident, Left as a Mystery, tells us. The city of Krot decided to put an indefinite stop to the investigation on the disaster that took place in the Monad Charity House, known as the Rose Estate. This was to prevent chaos caused by the large-scale spreading of the petrification disease. There have been no confirmed survivors so far. The petrification disease is a deadly epidemic, but this massive spread is unprecedented. The quarantine authorities surmise that the petrification disease caused the novel mutation. The Monad Charity House, once a boarding school for kids from the slums, has until recently been home to the founding Monad family, many students, and refugees. The leader of the alchemists, Valentinus Monad, has been confirmed to have passed during this catastrophe, and this will take a toll on the alchemists. This tragedy was most likely a planned attack by Simon Manus, intended to both test one of his experiments and murder the leader of the alchemists so that he could take his place. What Simon didn't account for, or perhaps didn't care about, was that he would cause the death of Geppetto's son, as well as his best friend, Romeo. We know this is how they died, as a loading screen tells us. Geppetto's son died from the petrification disease. The incident left an irreparable scar on the stubborn man's soul. Sometime after the incident, something unprecedented happened. Romeo opened his eyes, somehow alive again. But something was deeply, terribly wrong. The King of Puppets Ergo tells us, The boy opened his eyes. He found himself sitting on a throne he had not asked for. When he sought his friend of the past, he clung to his memories, even though he knew there was no going back. So it was that Romeo was unceremoniously chosen to be the king of puppets. His ergo had awoken within a puppet sat on a throne, and he quickly got to work doing what the creator demanded, fighting the infected monsters spreading across Krat and releasing their ergo. Other puppets such as the King's Flame Fuoco joined in his fight, creating even more puppets for his forces to rally against those carrying the disease. Even though he had awoken, Romeo was still bound to the Grand Covenant, so he had no choice but to take on the role of the King of Puppets, and start the attacks that came to be known as the Puppet Frenzy. However, this did not stop him from trying to reach out to his friend. charity house. Remember? We're best friends. I'm doing what I can to fend off both the petrification disease and the alchemists. My puppets and I are taking a stand against death itself. That's why I tried sending you messengers. But you got rid of them all. You're still an unstoppable fellow. I remember you. No reason for us to fight, I suppose. I'm Romeo. We grew up together in the Monad Charity House. Remember? We're best friends. I'm Romeo. We're best friends. He even goes so far as to tell us who's responsible for all of this death and destruction. Carlo, I hope you can hear me. The laws of the Grand Covenant bind us. We're his puppets. First law. All puppets must obey the Creator's commands. Law Zero. The Creator's name is... Geppetto. Giuseppe Geppetto. When we meet the King of Puppets in the Estella Opera House, he knows his puppet voice cannot reach us. So he tries to show P. Geppetto's true plan, through a performance.
P does not seem to understand what he's seeing, as when Romeo reaches out his hand in cooperation, he smacks it away, only concerned with defeating the King of Puppets and ending the frenzy. This leads to a terrible battle where we must face off against Carlo's old friend, who, after his first phase, shows us his skills from his time as a stalker, expertly evading and attacking in ways similar to our own, all the while speaking to us hoping to be heard. In New Game Plus, we can make out what's being said, and with his dying breath, Romeo thanks us, saying, Maybe this is what real freedom feels like. Thanks, Carlo. In the end, we're able to free Romeo from the shackles of the Grand Covenant. Unfortunately, it also means the death of Carlo's best friend by his own hand. This isn't quite the end, though as defeating the King of Puppets gets us someone's necklace. And upon showing it to Sophia, P has a reaction. Carlo. If we've been doing enough to increase our humanity up to this point, a change takes place within P. While he doesn't know the true significance of the necklace, there's an ache within him upon looking at it. His relationship with Romeo, his best friend, his family, starts to stir something within him, beginning a change, the first steps toward becoming a real boy. Thank you for joining us for the story of Romeo, the King of Puppets. Why do you think Romeo was chosen as the Puppet King? Was it mere coincidence, or something else that pit these dear friends against each other? Why does Romeo use a weapon associated with the infamous murderous puppet Arlecchino? If we never use the burnt white king's ergo, does that mean we can someday revive Romeo? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We'll see you again when next we investigate the lore of Pete.